Hello, I am Anne from Stitch Supply. Thank you for joining us today. I am going to take you through a little tour of the Stitch Supply Sew Along, what we're planning to do, supplies, patterns, and some pointers. So first of all, the pattern that we're gonna be using for the Sew Along is called Mugs. And this quilt was designed, um, a collaboration of myself and Christina from Center Street Quilts. And in the, at Stitch Supply, we have a retreat center, and in the retreat center, there is a wall of coffee cups. It was a feature of design of the building and has become a loved, loved space. And from that, so many people have asked for a quilt that, you know, it'd be neat to have a quilt design. So Christina and I worked together to bring this quilt to you. So the first thing that you'll need to do for the sew along is to grab your pattern this pattern is available in PDF form at stitchsupplyco.com. So you can grab that and print yourself off a copy. And while you're there, we also have a schedule for the sew along that you can download. This is great. It has the dates, the hashtags, and it even has some mugs on it so you can check off the ones that you have sewn. The sew along will begin on April 20th. That's just a week from today. And we are going to begin, you'll see on the schedule, we're be going, we'll begin with one mug per week. And many have asked, do I need to sew the whole quilt to be a part of the sew along? No, not at all. I would encourage you to sew as many mugs as you would like. If you want to turn them into mug rugs, into a mini wall quilt, coasters, hot pads, that's perfectly fine um, to enter the prizes, and we have some great prizes. Fiskars, Oliso, um, Moda, Orophil, plus many more have all donated wonderful prizes. So each week we will have a prize. And all you need to do to enter for that week is to use the hashtag, follow the schedule, and use the hashtag and post a picture of one block from that week. It does need to be, if you made the tall mug week, you need to post that mug and that just one block will enter you into that week's drawing. At the end of it, after all of um, eight weeks of sewing the mugs, we will then have a week where you can sew the blocks together and make your quilt and then there will be a grand prize which is going to be amazing and that will be um, one prize awarded to someone who has finished all 56 blocks. So in order to qualify for the grand prize, you do have to have this 56 blocks in your quilt. However, they can be any blocks that you choose. Six blocks of this pattern are traditionally pieced and two are paper pieced. So if paper piecing isn't for you, that's okay. Just make more of the other blind, other, other blocks. Any combination you choose is great. Um, a little a tidbit about the paper piecing. So I'll have some more videos coming up. We will do a traditionally pieced box and maybe give you some pointers on that. And then we are going to do the two, um, two videos, one each for each of the paper piecing box. So I will help you walk through those. And if you, it's something new you wanna learn, this would be a great time to give it a try. So after you have gathered your pattern and your schedule, the next thing you'll want to do is gather the background fabric. In the sample that I made, I used Haze Cut and Couture by Michael Miller Solids. I used Haze for the background and Earth for the shelves. So when you start your quilt, I highly recommend finding your background color and then working. I chose to, when I, when I brought mine home, I had all my rows done and I ended up debating between four different colors for the shelves. And it really, I needed a lighter color that would really keep my mugs standing out. So you do need to get your background color right away to start, but the shelves you always could wait on a little bit later. And I want to show you a little, a little trick right away here. There is some quilt, some blocks that didn't make my quilt. And they're these two. And I think you can figure out why right away when you look at them, the colors of the fabrics that I chose for 
the uh, mason jar mug were just too light. They got washed out. So make sure when you're picking the fabrics for your mugs themselves that you choose a fabric that is bright and bold or enough that contrasts with your background. So speaking more about choosing fabrics for the mugs themselves, it's really fun to fussy cut little, we have the telephone here and the roller skate the bears it's fun to pick those different prints these are all ruby star society fabrics that i was able to fussy cut and put in there i rummaged through my scrap bin and had a lot of these that i've collected but i would recommend if you are in need of fabrics for that that you choose a layer cake a layer cake is a 10 inch by 10 inch package of fabrics if you choose a charm pack, which is five by five, you won't quite be able to fussy cut and get the pieces out. You do need the 10 by 10 so that you can, um, one, the blocks are, some of them are bigger than five inches. So you need more fabric than that, but then also so that you can center the design as needed. Um, and I will have more on the website with the pattern. I have the earth and the haze, the cotton couture links for those two fabrics. And I will be adding a few more fabrics in there as just my suggestions for background fabric and shelves that I think well. And we also have the layer cake for the darlings um, that was used a lot in here and also the Ruby Star speckled fabric that is a more of a solid color fabric, but it has little, little specks of different colors and even little metallics in there. So those low layer cakes are on the website as well. After we have our eight weeks of making the mugs, one mug each week, we will have a week to assemble the quilt and then Knot and Thread. Caitlin from Knot and Thread has um, given us the amazing offer of anyone that has finished their mugs quilt top to have 20% off of quilting. So that is something that you may want to think about and take advantage when that time comes as well. So I'm going to encourage you now to start gathering your scraps you can start cutting out your pattern and get going on that. Um, a little tip, leave you with one last little suggestion here. I started cutting out um, another mug of mine and what I really liked to do was print an extra. For example, this is the enamel mug. The measurements here, I printed an extra page and with the Wonder Clips, just cut out the measurements you can see on there and then just clipped them to the fabric. So then when I go ahead to assemble and lay out all the pieces, they're all labeled and make it a little bit quicker. So I hope that you're going to join us on the sew along. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Stay tuned because we have a couple more videos that will give you some more pointers and some tips as we go. Thanks everyone. Mm -hmm.